The Spell is a TV movie from 1977, which seems like an odd choice for a single title Blu-ray release from Shout Factory, but hey, I don't make the rules over there. There's also a disclaimer at the start which says that the transfer was made with the best available film elements, which means it won't be perfect, so don't at them. It's the story of Rita, played by Susan Myers, who, despite looking like a normal-sized girl, is being called fat by the entire 1970s. Now she wears all those big dresses and those old-fashioned sweatsuits to hide all their lard. Very funny. <laughs> I mean, the whole goddamn movie won't shut up about her so-called weight problem. However, she might also have carry powers, as evident in the opening scene. She doesn't get along with her younger sister, played by baby Helen Hunt, but desperately wants the love of her mother, Lee Grant, who is the only one in the family who will stick up for her. Everyone else, especially Dad, can go jump off a cliff. Do you really need that second help? Extra will pay for it. You are paying for it. The hell? She's fine. You know, Rita, you really make it very difficult for me to say I'm sorry. Fuck off, Dad. Ultimately, the film is about a mother's struggle to love her daughter while also not wanting the rest of the family to get murdered, which is what she fears her daughter is going to do with her spooky powers. And it's weird how many characters in this are having such casual conversations about this kid doing magic and killing people. He's married. This lady got a ticket to Burning Man, kinda? <laughs> Eventually the mom seeks out the help of an expert of sorts and then watches as the daughter confronts her witch sponsor, which results in a witch fight. But the witch fight ends sooner than you would think it would because there's a big swerve that I quite appreciated. Although my actual reaction was more, oh cool, hey, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. The Blu-ray features an interview with writer Brian Taggart of Poltergeist 3 and Wanted Dead or Alive fame. He notes that this script was written before Carrie was a thing, and then when Carrie became a thing, his movie got relegated to a TV movie. So, while technically a cash-in, it's also technically not. Despite the infuriating fat-shaming of a girl who is perfectly normal, the spell is fine. It's just not any better than fine. I mean, it's way better than average for a TV movie from the era, for sure, but yeah. I wish this had been a double-featured disc with another title from around this time, and if so, I probably could have recommended it a little harder. May is very much one of those late 90s, early 2000s indie things, almost as if there was a template back then of some kind, where you're never quite sure about where a scene is going to go. Every scene in this micro-genre is potentially disturbing in some way. As if at any moment someone might strangle a seagull, or masturbate a 14-year-old, or James Duvall will randomly wander in. See, there he is. May stars Angela Bettis, and came out the same year she starred in the Carrie remake. That's a big year for her. Her character, May, was not raised properly by her weirdo mother, and this is very much on display in her adult life. Calling her socially awkward would be an understatement. She falls in love with stranger Jeremy Sisto and his Heath Ledger hair, and it's all kind of charming in a weird way until she tries to gross him out with a horrific story from her job as a vet assistant. This only mildly phases him, but would have sent me running away. No, it takes several more bizarro instances for him to decide she's too out there for his liking, and it's not long after that that he should really be reporting her to the police. Elsewhere, May is, for some reason, desired by co-worker Anna Faris, and they hook up. But Anna Faris is just out having fun, and May thinks it's a relationship. So, when Anna Faris hooks up with someone else, after already being rejected by Jeremy Sisto, May overreacts. That's the first hour of the movie, and as you can see, aside from being psychologically horrifying, it's not really a horror movie. 
No, that's confined solely to the third act, where May starts Frankensteining the perfect person together or something. I'm guessing because I was pretty put off by that point and wanted no part of where this was going. So, there's an audience for this, and I get what it's trying to say about how some people can really struggle with personal relationships, but I just don't want to watch it. Not like this. Fun fact, Ryan Johnson was the editor for this film. You might know him as the director of that pretty good Star Wars movie, The Last Jedi. Yeah, that's right, The Last Jedi is pretty good. Suck it, Star Wars nerds. <laughs> <laughs>